Good day Grade 11s, welcome to this final lesson on measurement in Grade 11. In this lesson we're looking at some examples to apply the stuff that we've learned in the last couple of lessons. So in other words we're going to be using our total surface area and our total volume formula that we have covered in the last few lessons. So let's look at an example, it says salt, the large the South African Large Telescope is housed in a cylindrical building with a domed roof. The height of the building wall is 17 meters and diameter is 26. And the first thing they ask us is what is the TSA, which is what is the total surface area. So let's just highlight the bit first that we're going to do. The first bit, we're going to break this up into two bits. We're going to break this up into the cylinder, or the cylindrical part of the building. And we're going to work out its total surface area first. So total surface area of this, okay, do you agree we don't need to find the surface area of this top bit because that's actually open and we don't need to find the total surface of the bottom because that's the ground. So the only bit that we need to find the total surface area of is this bit here which if we had to, if for example I was a Hulk and I could tear along here and open it out like I showed you when I was teaching this to you in the total surface area lesson, it becomes a rectangle where the length of the rectangle is the circumference of this and the breadth of the rectangle is the height. So therefore we've got the total surface area is equal to 2 pi r that is the circumference of the circle times by the height, which in this case is 2 times pi. Let's talk about the radius. They've given us that the full length from here to here is 26, which means the diameter is 26. Therefore, the radius of this is going to be 13. So therefore, this is 13 times by the height, and the height they gave us to be 17. Right, so now let's just whip out our calculator, okay, and work out exactly what this becomes. So we're going to go menu and we choose what we want, and then we're going to go 2 times shift pi times 13 times 17 equals 1388.58. So it becomes 1388.58. 0.58 and this is meters squared. But that's not the total surface area of the whole building. That's just the surface area of this round bit that makes up the walls. Now we need to find the total surface area of the domed roof. Now this dome is half a sphere and okay we could carry it on down here which we're not going to do. So it's half a sphere. So we want to find the total surface area of half, half a sphere, half a sphere. Now we know that the total surface area of a full sphere is 4 pi r squared and the reason we know that is because we've learnt it and because I showed it to you. But we want half a sphere so what are we going to do? We're going to divide by 2 therefore our total surface area that we're looking for is going to be 4 divided by 2 is just 2 pi and the radius squared which is going to be 13 squared and then again we're just going to pop this in our calculator so we're going to go 2 times shift pi times 13 squared and we end up with 1061.86 1061.86 so it's 1061.86 meters squared therefore therefore we can say that our total surface area of our whole building is going to be the sum of these two it's going to be the sum of this which is 1388.58 plus the 1061.86 and if we add them together we've got 8 and 6 is 14 carry 1, 8 and 6 is 13, 14 carry 1, 8 and 1 is 9, 10, 8 and 6 is 14, 15, 4, 2. So it becomes 2450.44 square meters. So that is the total surface area, so that is the amount of 
material you would need to be able to cover this whole building. Right, now let's work out the volume and I've run out of space so I'm just going to raise everything and start again. So let's start again and again I'm going to break this up into two parts. First we're going to find the volume of your cylinder. So the volume of a basic shape like a cylinder is just what? It's the area of the base times the perpendicular height. So the volume of our cylinder or cylindrical part of the building is going to be the area of the base which is a circle so it's pi r squared times by the height which is going to be pi times 13 squared times by the height of 17. So let us pop that in our calculator. So we've got shift pi times 13 squared times the height of 17 and that gets us 9025.7956. Okay, so that rounds up to 9025.8. 9,025.8 cubic meters. Please remember that volume is measured in cubic meters. Why? Because this is area, which is meters squared, and then we're timesing it by another dimension, which is also meters, so it becomes cubic meters. Now let's look at the volume of our dome. The volume of the dome is equal to half the volume of a sphere. Do we agree? Because remember we said that this here was effectively half a sphere. That we could have actually carried it down and see that the sphere would have gone along there. Now we know, because we know, because we've studied, that the volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And we want half of that, so we just cancel those and we've got 2. So we end up with 2 over 3 pi r cubed, but r is still what? It's still 13. Okay, it's still 13. So therefore that becomes 2 over 3 pi times 13 cubed. So we're going to whip out our calculator again and we're going to go um, bracket 2 divided by 3 close bracket times shift pi times 13 to the power of 3 and we're going to close off and it becomes 4601.39 so that's 4601.39 meters cubed therefore therefore we can say that the total volume of this the total volume is going to be 9025.8 plus 4601.39 which equals and again I'm going to use my calculator so it becomes okay let's leave it over here 9025.8 plus 4601.39 and it becomes 1367.19 13 627.19 cubic meters. Right, and that's the total volume of our salt, South African Large Telescope. By the way, this is found in Sutherland, and if you ever get the opportunity to go and visit it, it's an amazing thing, place to go and visit and to learn about astronomy. Right, let's move on. A family wants to build an enclosure. Cabello draws up the plans for a square enclosure of length p meters. Lichle looks at the plans and states that the area of the enclosure needs to be doubled. To do this, Lichle suggests doubling the length of the sides of the enclosure. Cabello suggests adding 2 meters to the length of the side. Yosef suggests multiplying the length of the sides by a factor of root 2. And Abra suggests doubling only the width. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So let's start with black to be our original size, okay? So we've got a square and this is the original. And the original, do you agree, was going to be P. So it's going to be P by P. Therefore the original area would have been P squared. Now they want to double the size of the enclosure. Okay, so what do they do? They say that Lichle suggests, Lichle suggests that we double the length 
of the sides of the enclosure. So we're doubling the length of the sides of the enclosure. So he wants to double both the lengths. So therefore Lechle wants to make this doubly as big. Okay. So do you agree that therefore he wants this to be 2p and he wants this to be 2p? If he does that, do you agree that that becomes 2p times 2p, so therefore this area now is going to be 4p squared. So that is 4 times the original, so that's not right, okay, because the original is p squared, so we want not 4p squared. Let's have a look at, that was Lechler's, let's look at Cabello. Cabello suggests adding 2 meters to the length of the sides. Two, let's see, Cabello says let's add 2 meters to the length of the sides. This time he's going we should go p plus 2 and we should go p plus 2. So therefore what are we doing? We're saying that this is going to be p plus 2 times by p plus 2. So if we multiply that out it becomes p squared plus 4p plus 4 okay so that could possibly be double the size okay of the original size let's have a look at the next example okay let's choose another color it's green so we've done Lichle we've done Cabello let's do Yosef Yosef says Yosef says that what we need to do is we need to multiply the length of the size by a root 2 root 2. So this is going to be root 2p and this is going to be root 2p. Therefore the area of this is going to be root 2p multiplied by root 2p which becomes root 2 times root 2 is 2p squared. 2p squared. And 2p squared is double the original area. So yay, Yosef is right. Awesome. We like Yosef. He's good. Let's check if a bra is also correct. And then we need to go and go back to Cabello and see if his works as well by putting in some numbers. So let's choose another color. Let's choose purple and go for a bra. Okay. So bra says, what about if we only double the width. So we let this be p and this be 2p, right? Then do you agree the area here would be p times by 2p, so that would become 2p squared. So a bra is also correct. Okay, so both Yosef and a bra are correct so far. Now we need to just put some numbers in to see if Cabello was right. So let's go back to red and let's say let's let p be 2 meters. Then do you agree that the original area, the original area would be p squared which would be 4. 2 squared is 4. So now if we use Cabello's suggestion we have got p squared, which is going to be 4, plus 4 times 2 plus 4, which is going to be 4 plus 8 plus 4, which equals 16, which is much bigger, so that doesn't work either. So the two people that are correct are Yosef and Abar. And you can see here that we've been using what we call the multiplying by factor of k to see how things affect the area and the width. Right. Now let's look at one more example. It says, an ice cream cone has a diameter of 54.2 millimeters. So in case you can't see that, that says 52.4 millimeters. And a total height of 146 millimeters, a total height. It says, calculate the total surface area of the ice cream cone, ice cream and its cone. Total surface area of its ice cream and its cone. So now, this one's slightly trickier than the first one we did, not just because it's got this cone with the half a sphere and the actual cone shape at the bottom, but because they've given us some numbers and they haven't broken them down for us, so we're going to have to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change to another color so we can see what we're talking about. Do we agree that if that is the whole of that is the diameter 
then this bit here is the radius. And the radius is going to be half of your 52.4. So the radius is going to be 26.2 millimeters. 26.2 millimeters. But what you need to realize, and here's the trick, because do you agree they've given us the whole of this height? And we don't want the whole of this height. We want half of the, we want the part that's just the height of this cone, just the height of the cone. So let's think about that. Okay, so do you agree that that there is also a radius? That there is a radius as well. Therefore, this bit here is 26.2 millimeters. So then if that bit there is 26.2 and the whole of this is 146, then this bit here is going to be 146 minus my 26.2, which is going to be a hundred and, let me work this out, it would normally be 120, so it's going to be 119.8 millimeters. Right, now we can start talking about the total surface area of the ice cream and cone. So total surface area of your dome, okay, the ice cream bit, the ice cream, and let me just change color so we do know what we're talking about. Shall we have nice orange ice cream? So the total surface area of the ice cream, yellowish orange ice cream, okay, so it's vanilla flavored, is going to be a half of a sphere, all right, remember this? But the sphere's surface area is 4 pi r squared. So therefore, this is going to be a half times by 4 pi r squared, right? Which is going to be 2 pi r squared, which in this case is 2 pi times by 26.2 squared. Okay. Right. So then I can get my calculator out and I can go... 2 times shift pi times 26.2 squared equals and it becomes 4313.03 and that is going to be millimeters squared. Now we need to talk about our cone. We need to talk about our cone. And let us make our cone blue, just for fun. You never see the blue in cone, but you never know. So this is going to be our cone. Okay. And we know, because we've learned this, that the total surface area of the cone. Now remember that the total surface area normally of a cone equals the top bit plus the sides. But we don't have to worry about that because of the fact that the top bit is covered with ice cream. So we don't have to worry about the top bit. We only have to do the sides. And the total surface area of the cone's sides is given by pi r h s. And that's our problem. Because if you look at this, do you see that we've been given the vertical height and we've been given the radius? So we've got the radius and we've got pi, but we don't have this hs because this hs stands for the slant height, the slant height. But we have mathematical tools that help us get the slant height. I can take a line and drop it down the center of this cone. And do you agree that the way this is drawn, we know that this is also 119.8. That's 119.8. And because I've drawn this down this cone, that there is a right angle. So what does that make this? This makes this, the slant height, the hypotenuse, my hypotenuse, I'm just writing hypotenuse and angle, hypotenuse of my right angle triangle. So I can use Pythagoras to get my pi, my hs. So let's just do that in a different color so you don't get confused if I can find my mouse, which has gone away. There it is. Um, no, 
choose a different color. Uh, let's do purple. So I'm going to do it up here because I'm running out of space over there. So we know from Pythagoras that we've got x squared plus y squared has to equal to our r squared. In other words, that's your hypotenuse. Therefore, x plus y square rooted is going to equal to my, Pythag my hypotenuse r. Therefore, my hs in this case is going to be the square root of 26.2 squared plus 119.8 squared. So what do we need? We need our calculator. Out it comes. So we go, okay fine, we're going to go shift square root bracket 26.2 bracket squared and I forgot to just say on a second, put a second bracket in. Bracket, bracket, 26.2 bracket squared plus bracket 119.8 squared bracket squared square it equals and it becomes 122.63. 122.63. So that there is 122.63 millimeters. So this slant height now we've got, there we go, it is, let me write it in, 122.63 millimeters. How cool is that? And now we can go back to our blue, our pretty blue. There it is. And we can find the total surface area because this is equal to pi times the radius, which in this case is 26.2, times the slant height, which we just got, which was 122.63. And again, we're just going to whip out our calculator and we're going to pop it in. We're going to go shift pi times by 26.2 times by 122.63, close brackets. There is no bracket required delete equals 10,093.64. 10,093.64. So it's 10,093.64. So therefore, therefore, remember this is in millimeters, don't have a panic attack. Therefore, the total surface area of our ice cream cone is 4,313.03 plus 10,093.64, okay, which equals, if we add this up, that becomes a 7, that's a 6, 3 and 3 is a 6, 9 and 10 is 1, carry 1, that's a 4, that's a 4, and that's a 1 millimeters squared, millimeters squared. So that's our total surface area of our ice cream and its cone. Right, now we need to work out the total volume of the ice cream. And again, because I've run out of space, I'm just going to erase some of this stuff. I'm not going to erase it all because I actually need some of this information for the next bit and I don't feel like calculating it all again. So what we're going to do is just delete the bit we don't need, which is all a bit about the total surface area. Grade 11 is the best way to do this stuff to get to get really get to grips with it is to go and practice. And please make sure that you know all your formula for your different total surface areas and volumes. Right, let's now do the next one. So now they want, and I'm going to stick to the same colors again, they want the total volume of the ice cream in its cone. So again, I'm going to use this funny yellowy orangey color to use find the volume of my actual ice cream, which of course is all important when we're eating our ice cream. So remember that the volume is going to be half the volume of a sphere. And because you've been good and learnt it, you know that the volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Therefore, we can make it nice and easy for ourselves. We can cancel this with this and it becomes 2 over 3 pi and the radius happens to be 26.2 cubed. So we get out our calculator and we go, okay, fine. That's easy enough to do. It is going to be bracket 2 divided by 3, close bracket, times shift pi 
times bracket 26 point two close bracket to the power of three equals thirty seven thousand six hundred sixty seven point one three so it's thirty seven thousand six hundred sixty seven point one three thousand six hundred sixty seven point one three cubic millimeters cubic millimeters please remember that cubic millimeters but now that was the volume of the ice cream now we want the volume of the cone and the volume of a cone, I'm going to change to this color here. The volume of a cone equals one third times the area of the base times its perpendicular height. So now we do need that 119.8. So therefore it's going to be a third. Now the base in this happens to be a circle. So therefore it's times by pi r squared times the perpendicular height in this case which is going to be 119.8. So therefore it's a third times by pi times by the radius which is going to be 26.2 and that is squared times by 119.8 and again we're going to get out our calculator and we go that is going to be bracket 1 divided by 3 bracket times shift pi times 26.2 squared times 119.8 equals 86116.83 86116.83 86116.83 what is it cubic millimeters and then finally what do we need to do we need to add this so the total volume the total volume is going to be the volume of the ice cream which is 37667.13 plus 86116.83 which gives us and again just let's get out our calculator it's easier 37667.13 plus 86116.83 and it becomes 12378.96 seven eight three point nine six watts millimeters cubed and that grade 11 is a lesson on how we use measurements so now you can see how we would use it in everyday examples as well as how you would do it in mathematical problems have a lovely day please practice this and then do the assessment at the end of the section cheers